Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Failure Effect, a show about reclaiming the word failure and turning it into success. My name is Wayua Muli. I am your host. And this week, we're hosting someone who is used to being where I am. Her name is Helen Ashikombune. She is the host of a KBC show called The Dada Show. And welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Right. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's interesting being on this other side. (laughs) I can imagine. (laughs) You know, it's actually a bit nerve wracking. I'm like, oh, well, I'm having an out of body experience. I'm feeling, you know, sorry and empathetic towards my guests. Now I'm like, is this how you guys feel? (laughs) You know, it's like free falling. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you so much for having me where you are. Karibu, karibu. Mm. Now, um, we're going to start right at the top. You are a single mother. Yes. How old is your son? My son is going to be 17 Wow. in August. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I tell him you're 17, he keeps on telling me, no, I'm not 17. I'm, I'm, I'm yet to turn 17. Yeah. But I tell him you're 17, boys, just embrace it. Yeah. So he's turning 17 in August the 25th. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, raising a child to that age yeah. is a feat. Oh, yeah. You know, and now he's about to get independent, yeah. you know, find his own place. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like those words. I'm sorry. <laughs> we sorry, don't like sorry. those words. <laughs> you know, but that's also the way your mom must have felt at some point because yeah. you were also raised by a single mom. Yes, and we are the three of us. I'm mm-hmm. um, the last born of a family of three. I have two elder brothers. Mm-hmm. And yes, my mother was, you know, my mother is a single mother and she has been able to bring us to where we are. So uh, it's interesting that you pointed out that that's the way I felt because I called her up. Right now, she's, you know, she's my go to person for everything. Yeah. And I called her up the other day. And I told her, ah, Kwani, these schools are not closing. You know, I feel like these people keep on holding, you know, they're holding my child. <laughs> then she said, uh, she said, you know, from an African woman, you know, not very emotional. She said, now you know how I used to feel. I'm like, oh. That's how you used to feel. Okay. So I saw Polly. But yeah, I guess you're right. That's yeah. that's the way she used to feel. Okay. Yeah. Now you're also a chef? Yes. Okay. What mm. else do you do? So let me correct that before people come, you know, knives <laughs> blazing. Uh I am a self-taught chef. But of course, I do come from a family of chefs. My elder brother is a chef. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second born brother is an apprentice chef. So mm-hmm. we all cook. Mm-hmm. So by virtue of uh, association, yeah. one way or another, you got into cooking. Mm-hmm. So yes. So I'm a, I'm a chef, you know, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And I do have two outfits. I have mm-hmm. a Shiku's Kitchen and mm-hmm. I have the Samosa Chick. Mm-hmm. And of course, these are things I came to later on in life. But I've always cooked. I've always loved cooking. And whenever I would host or whenever I would, you know, take some of the snacks. You know, in Kenya, you have to look for a side hustle. Yes. So I would always carry my last my last employment. I used to take uh, samosas, you know, make little breakfast packs, mm-hmm. you know, with samosa, you know, smokies and, uh, and uh, an egg, boiled egg. And they used Used to really sell. So guys were like, you know what? You really need to sell these things, you know? Stop, stop. Usikali Talanta. That's what they used to say. Right. Yeah. So I'm a TV show host, a talk show host currently, but I've also done a travel show earlier on. It was called Zurura. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my co-host and I were actually nominated for a Kalasha Award, you know, for best TV show host. Yeah. So uh, that was a very big moment. Just the nomination for us was already such a victorious moment. So uh, I think aside from that, I like to say that I'm a a jack of a million trades. I wear so many hats. So if tomorrow someone tells me you're a farmer, yeah, so I also do, I do, I also do farm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm involved in export import business, especially Mm -hmm. for basil. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I do many things, you know, yeah. 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 That sounds like you, you have a your your core value is hard work. Yes. And where did you get that from? Uh, that came from my mom. Mm-hmm. I have to give her all the credit. And of course, this is not something that uh, the hard work, you know, uh, became inborn from the get-go. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll get into that, you know. Yeah. It was something that was forced out of me by necessity, okay. you know. So my mom, the thing that I really admire the most about my mom is this whole attitude for I can do many things is I completely copy-pasted from my mom. My mom is the kind of person who will, uh, she was employed, she would be farming, and she kept on telling me, I am not one person. I'm not one thing. 
And you should not be one thing. And, you know, she does not believe in, oh, my God, you'll be just a wife or you're just a mother or you're just a worker. It says you exhaust your potential. You mm -hmm. have to push until you can't push anymore. So my mom got into, you know, she was employed if there was an opportunity that came about and she thought it's something that's going to be beneficial to her and her family, she would jump head first. Mm -hmm. So uh, she did make a couple of mistakes along the way. And it's something that we laugh at. But the fact that she always sprung up you know she never it never put her down she would try a tint in uh in multi-level marketing wow <laughs> i joke around and i say there's no multi-level marketing that i'm not i'm not a member of because she would join and she would add me as a distributor uh -huh. and you know she did farming she's still doing farming so when the quail eggs the funny thing is when the quail eggs came up she was <laughs> among the first people <laughs> Oh my goodness. So mom didn't well. stop at anything. If yeah. she hears that this is a venture, yeah. she will go at it. She opened a restaurant. She had wow. a shop. She did a touring company. She had so many things. So it's very hard for me to sit and be content mm -hmm. with I'm a talk show host. Mm -hmm. I'm a salesperson. You know, I'm a farmer. I'm Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Right. I don't even think she would let me. She'd be like, no, you have to push yourself. So that's definitely where my work ethic has come from. Right. So you mentioned a very interesting word there, salesperson. Yes. Yeah. And this is, I believe, because your life right now is very different from the way that it started Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You have yeah. no idea. Oh, shoot. <laughs> because you started in sales. Yes, I did. Right. And I landed in sales by default, actually. Mm. You know, I mean, by virtue of... Uh, I can run my mouth, <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> I can be convincing, I can put in a good sentence together with proper English and proper tenses. Right. So in 2009, I believe, uh, actually 2009 was somewhere hanging out with a few of my friends and I met somebody who was, you know, a very... Um, high profile uh, in one of our key media houses. Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, I was just talking, I was doing me. So I was talking to him and he said, have you ever tried doing sales? And of course, now this is me. So I was just like, yo, I can sell ice to an Eskimo. What are you telling me about? Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks later, he called me for an interview. Mm -hmm. And so when I get to the interview place, I'm seeing this, you know, like 40, 50 people. I'm like, oh my God, I've made a mistake. Oh, I've made a mistake. What am I doing? Because I mean, it, it, that's not even what I studied in uni. So I'm thinking, oh God, what am I going to do? So I walk into the interview and I, I think the whole thing for, I'm a charmer, you know, and mm -hmm. I know how to interact with people. I know how to read the non-verbals and the verbals. And so of course I did what I do best. I made them laugh. I, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, asked me, when are you going to start? And of course I throw in some witty comment like, you know, this afternoon is good with me. Yeah. And they crack up and um, that's how I got my first job uh -huh. so I started doing I started selling uh media space uh I did that for a couple of months then I moved into to another media house okay <laughs> did that for another couple of months to a year uh -huh. moved again <laughs> You know, I, I'm what we call a media dot dot. You know, there those are the terms that we don't use. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and you know, when we are since we are on the failure effect, that's the, some of the things that was a very crucial uh, place for me when I started because I'd start a job and leave it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. start a job leave it I would look for excuses if you've ever seen any of those memes where you know you see someone in bed looking for an excuse not to go to work oh yeah. that was me right that was completely me mm -hmm. so after a while um because when I was looking for these jobs I was looking for these jobs primarily so that I can get a paycheck at the end of the month mm -hmm. that was my motivation mm -hmm. so I really did not care too much and please note you know my failing at performing at this job was definitely not an indictment of how good the product was Right. The products were fantastic, mm -hmm. but I was just not there. You mm -hmm. know, I needed a paycheck. So I was very easily distracted by other things. Remember, I'm a young girl. Yeah. You know, I was young at that point. So there's the partying, there's traveling, there's friends, there's going all, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, you kind of feel like, hey, this job is messing out with my, is messing up with my hanging yes, schedule. Life. I can't <laughs> deal. You know, <laughs> what is this business about waking up at seven to go where? I just got home. You know, <laughs> yes. you know, so yeah. it was just, it was pretty much that mm -hmm. and so moving from from place to place and job to job and I did media for a couple of years and then of course uh digital migration happened and P.S. I worked for the key media houses right. you know yeah uh but it sort of looked like a vicious cycle um there's something in psychology known as uh, conditional thinking is mm -hmm. it conditioning thinking something of the sort where you sort of psych your brain mm -hmm. tell your brain by this time like this is something that has to happen mm -hmm. 
So when I was growing up, I used to tell myself that someone has to be beaten by a snake. Okay. Because we grew up somewhere, there's a lot of grass. So right. tell yourself that that is something that has to happen, mm -hmm. you know? So I used to tell myself, December, I'm just going to get fired, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or I'll lose the job or I'll quit. Okay. And sure enough, the tongue is a very powerful tool. Yes. So that's the message and everything that I was doing would be directed towards that. Mm -hmm. So most December, and plus December is a time for hanging out. Yes. So I'm just like, it's cool, I'll be fine. Now, what pushed this particular behavior is because I would never stay too long without getting a job. Mm -hmm. I've never stayed for more than a month mm -hmm. without getting a job. I keep telling people I'm an expert interviewee. Right. That's if there are those, skill. yes. <laughs> If there are those YouTube videos that people need to, to, you know, how to answer the questions for what are your weaknesses and what are this and what are your strengths and yeah. where do you see yourself in five years? Chan. That's you. you got I have that. that in the bag completely. <laughs> it didn't right. matter. It was just going to be different outfit, yeah. different audience, same script. Yeah. So I have gotten most of the jobs that I actually applied for. And so between jobs, I never really sat down to introspect. Mm -hmm. What could be the root, you know, a root reason as to why um, I'm caught up in this vicious cycle? Mm -hmm. What is it about me? Why can't I maintain a job? Mm -hmm. I mean, was it bugging me? Yes, it was. Yeah. The inconsistency can drive you crazy, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd have clients and you're calling a client and you're like, uh, hello, so um, by the way, this, this product I'm delivering, they say, oh, Habaria, where you are? Ah, I'm no longer there, by the way. And you could feel people just completely, you know, hey, they're just like, yeah. oh, this chick. <laughs> oh, we're not sure. I sent my CV to somebody and someone uh -huh. was like, eh, you see, out of those 10 jobs you've posted, can you just pick four? <laughs> Me, in my mind, I'm sure that, eh, hey, by the way, you know, yeah. I have experience. I'm yeah. job all day, you know, because I moved from media, yeah. I've done software, I've uh -huh. done insurance, I've done FMCG. Uh -huh. I've been those people who are selling umbrellas mm. in uh, industrial area. There's nothing I've not done. Mm -hmm. Now, what part of the downside is, you know, nobody takes you seriously. Right. And you can see people sort of give up on you mm -hmm. or people sort of just brushing you off. This person is not serious. This person is not serious. And of course, that does play a role mm -hmm. in how you view yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and what your purpose is. Right. Uh, so that was that was the history behind now for me th that I, I believe that those are some of the turning points to where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I remember having a boss and she told me, Ashiko, you're one of the most brilliant people I have ever met, but you're one of the most unreliable human beings wow. I have ever met. That thing gutted me. Yeah. Because, you know, you're like, really? But uh, they said, you know, the problem is we'll give you a task. You'll be able to undertake it. You'll do it. That's excellent. She done it. Oh, my goodness. You know, and to have someone mirror that, you see, most of the time, you see the person who's who's just, you know, misbehaving in the office. People really don't say, but someone talked, someone just looked at me and just told me, I mean, mm -hmm. you're good and said, all of that skill is really not useful mm -hmm. if you're not dependable, if you're not reliable. Yeah. So it's just a complete waste. Eh, 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 eh. I think I went home, I bawled my eyes out because I was like, where? Wow. And so reality starts dawning that, eh, okay, but what is it? Mm -hmm. What is it mm -hmm. that is making me get, I could not explain, but get into a job, I'd leave. I'd yeah. get it. Seldomly was I fired. Right. I'd leave. Mm -hmm. You know, but I would always have the knack of knowing <laughs> I'm in trouble. You know, two, three warning letters let, later, you're like, ah, yeah. Papa, I'm about to be given the boot. Yeah. So I'd leave. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, I lost my best friend. Okay. And the realities of life you know, life, and she died at 29. Wow. So that's someone who's very, very young. Yeah. So life hits you very differently. Yeah. After you've lost somebody that close. Yeah. I mean, I have experienced a number of traumas in my life, but I think they were always being held up by a wall. Mm -hmm. And I'm very good at wearing the mask yeah. and making people see what they want to see. Mm -hmm. And so that broke me. Oh. completely broke me. What were the symptoms of you being broken? Like, like what, what did you go through in the aftermath of her death? Oh, my typical ones. You know, I mm -hmm. drank. Okay. You know, drank yourself into, because it, there's no realities of everything that are happening yeah. because the things that you have not processed. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like sometimes uh, people are not cognizant of when somebody, when people are giving out a cry for help. Yes. I mean, granted, people are going to say, you know what, everybody is dealing with their own stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we, we're going to walk around with, a, with an emotional detector mm -hmm. to know that Ashiko is, is going through stuff. Yeah. You know? And I, I, and I thank God because somebody did see through all of that. Mm -hmm. So I would drink myself into a stupor. I even went to the office and I asked him, why don't you guys just fire me? You know, just get rid of me. And I had somebody in the office, you know, I had actually, I had uh, a lady that I used to report to and she had my back. And, you know, I think she saw me. Yeah. She really saw me. Yeah. She didn't see what people want to see. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah, you know, loud, happy. Uh, da. She saw through the facade that I was putting across. Uh, but I don't think there's anything much she could do at that time. And one time, you know, it was very bad that now this person saw through that. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, I had a nervous breakdown. Okay. And I ended up in hospital. Okay. Ooh, and I've never shared this one. Oh, good. Here comes all the judgment. <laughs> No, no. Uh, so no. I ended up in hospital and I was diagnosed. And I was so grateful for this person because this person did not have to. Okay, um, explain <clears throat> exactly what happened with this person. So what happened is, you know, when you're hanging out with somebody and you're drinking and you're drinking and I'm most probably, you know, you've just been hanging out for a couple of days. You know, you've been doing it and, and he could see that I'm definitely not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I became, and I was very angry i was so angry mm -hmm. i was angry at everyone and everything right. and i would snap on an instant mm -hmm. and i believe at some point he tells me that i was actually having a conversation with somebody who's passed away now who is my friend at the point where you had the yes on yeah the so and at, the, at that point so, so these are things that you know i I mean, don't remember. Right. Uh, I mean, for obvious reasons. Yeah. So he he took me to hospital. Mm -hmm. So he took me to, you know, a good hospital. And I actually had to be, you know, sedated. And, you know, but very few people know about this story. So right. I had to be sedated. And and this was right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't even have the, the nerve mm -hmm. to tell my mom. You know, right. I couldn't even send her a message. Because I had been going down this rabbit hole for a while. Mm -hmm. And so many people have sort of, you know, you know, written me off at that point. Okay. You know, she's not going to amount to anything. And this, you know, this doesn't start from the workplace. And this is why it's so important for people to be cognizant of what they tell their children, True. what teachers tell their pupils. You know, as long as it's a young mind is a very, is a sponge. Mm -hmm. So, when, you know, when you're in school and you're constantly being told, you're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to amount to anything. So all of that sits in. Okay. And so as you grow up, you... So I was just playing out everything that I had been told is yeah. my destiny. Mm -hmm. So I end up in hospital. I've been admitted. I finally wake up. And the first thing I'm thinking is, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay this bill? Right. And I'm told that the gentleman who brought me, one, one of my very, very good friends, mm -hmm. had already sorted the bill. Wow. Wow. And I had never seen kindness like that. Yeah. I had never really seen anybody go out of their way to jump in and, and be there for me. He didn't have to. Yeah. He really didn't have to, you know. And at that time is when the psychiatry, uh, the psychiatrist came around is when they said, you know what? You have severe depression. Okay. It's one of the most elating and i know this is a very juxtaposed uh feeling yeah it's one of the most elating feelings on earth to mm -hmm. know where this is my I'm problem i'm not crazy yeah i am not crazy mm -hmm. i can pinpoint and say that this happened and this happened and this happened for a reason mm -hmm. and of course now right after that i got into i got into therapy mm -hmm. and i started working on my childhood trauma i started working on you know just various things and 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 we don't know we don't have the capacity to understand how many adults are walking around with childhood trauma mm -hmm. you know it could be sexual abuse it could be physical abuse it could be bullying it could be rejection it's a, there are a myriad of things and we don't even we can't even and acknowledge how they play out mm -hmm. in our day-to-day -day routines. Mm -hmm. You walk around thinking that you're fine, but then you, you overreact to something small. Mm -hmm. You walk around, you get into a relationship, and you're extremely clingy. Most of the time, if you cannot pinpoint why was I behaving the way I was behaving, you may need to go back, True. way back. And that's what I did. And I had to dig deep, and it's hard and it's painful 
And you have to dig deep as to what is the root cause of why I do the things I do? How do I do the things I do? What is this, you know, the need to be accepted, the need for validation? Why do I need? Because half of the time when I was, you know, missing out on work, it would be because somebody had said, let's go to Naivasha. You know, what is my need? Why do I need to be validated? Why do I need to be accepted? You know, what is this that, what is this gaping hole that I have that makes me go down some, you know, do some things that completely compromise who I am? You know, who am I? Because, you know, I used to say this and I would say it proudly, but right now I'm just like, okay, that may not be okay. So tell people I'm an amoeba. So whatever situation you put me in, I will morph into it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that comes from my personality. That right. comes from the fact that I have an acting background. That comes from the fact, you know, there's so many things that would make. So I would join this clique and I would morph. Mm -hmm. To fit in. Yeah, to yeah. fit in. Yeah. So what is this need? Why do I need to be loved? Why do I need to be accepted? Mm -hmm. You know, why, is it, why isn't building myself a priority? Mm -hmm. And it should be. So when I started going for therapies, when I actually realized, okay, so even the unreliability, mm -hmm. even the vicious cycle, even the lack of focus, those were all pegged on my condition. Mm -hmm. And it was a thing that was going on for a while. Right. So the weirdest thing about it is, so when I go back to work, yes, in incidentally, last <laughs> employment still not fired me. That woman <laughs> loved me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, right? still not fired me. And when I went back to work, and this is now in uh, 2018, mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot. Mm -hmm. But remember, for you to actually be able to be productive, you actually have to want to be there. This is true. Wait, what job was this? Now, this one, no, remember I've shifted from media. Yeah. I told you I've sold insurance. Yes. Everything. Yeah. So now here I was actually doing, you know, wealth management. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. the weirdest thing about wealth management is I was selling, you know, a lot of water and chugging a lot of wine, you know. Yeah. Because I didn't believe, I mean, of course, these things work. Please don't quote me. These things work, but I really didn't believe in that. Okay. Because if you look back, there was nowhere where I was putting, you know, a nest egg. I wasn't saving, you know, the money you're going, you're blowing it, you're doing ABCD. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. You know, so I was in a wealth management firm, which, um, you know, I mean, you just completely, you know, you're a salesperson. Once you're a salesperson, you're a salesperson. Understand the market, understand the product, go for it. And then, you but know? you're not embodying the lifestyle. But I'm not embodying the lifestyle. I don't particularly believe in the product. I mm -hmm. don't even know. But of course, I'm reading from a script. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the weirdest thing in 20, uh, in 20, that is 2018. Mm -hmm. So the company closes down. Okay. And I remember thinking, come on. I was trying to be nice. I was really, really trying. And then plus you guys didn't give me a heads up so that I can jump ship. I was really, really trying to be nice. Mm -hmm. So this is the starting work at, in 2009. And this is a clean 10 years later. Wow. I have nothing to show for it. Okay. I do not have an, an asset. Yeah. Whether depreciating or otherwise, that mm -hmm. I can sit down and say this is mine. Right. Still living from hand to mouth, uh -huh. embodying a lifestyle that really isn't even mine. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself jobless, mm -hmm. broke, mm -hmm. and I had to tuck my tail between my legs mm -hmm. and move back home. With your mom? Yes. Okay. Anybody who's ever moved back home knows mm -hmm. how you feel little. Yeah. You yeah. feel so small. Yeah. You feel so insignificant. Yeah. And so I moved back home. And I moved back home and now you're back to under the roof and you got to play by the yes, rules. Yes, you have to be a nice oh, girl. Oh, you're fighting everything. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, I can't I do this. I can't do this. Yeah. And so here I am and I'm working there and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm at home. I am jobless. I am, you know, I don't have a house, you know, so my son and I are back with my mom. Mm -hmm. And of course, my mom, you know, being, you know, right now she's a counselor among mm -hmm. the many hats that she wears, mm -hmm. you know, she'd want to. You know, to ask you, so what's your plan? You know, what are you going to do? It's to see, and at that point, I'm blank. Right. Because when we started therapy, <clears throat> you kind of think that it's going to be fix it immediately. Yeah. Despite the number of times that your therapist tells you that this is a continuous process, you are sure. Yeah. You're going to walk out that door. And perfect. I'll be healed. Yes. So now I'm like, here's another challenge. It's come and slapped me sideways. Right. And I'm like, so what do I do? Mm -hmm. This is another failure that I've added into the book. Mm -hmm. And there was a time I kept on thinking, and I, and I used this statement a couple of times where I used to sit and think, why? I kind of feel like I'm the benchmark of problems, you know? Like, you know, this is who I am. 
And I hated it. Right. So here we go and it's the end of the year and I don't know what to do. But now I also do have a little bit of uh, awareness about me, Mm -hmm. about where I'm at. So I'm in the process of getting to know myself, getting to love myself, getting to know my worth. Mm -hmm. And so my mother asks me, so are you going to look for another job? And I said, I can look for another job. But in my mind, I'm just like, then I fall back into the same cycle. Because the more you used to feel inadequate, the more you would fall into bad habits. Right. You know, you do feel like you're not worth it. Uh-huh. And I wanted to surround myself with something that's going to make me happy. Uh-huh. Now, all along, I have always cooked. Everybody knows I cook. Yeah. And I'd always toyed around with the idea of uh, doing meal plans for, for, you know, my single friends. Yes. You know, just doing meals for the whole week and taking it to them. Most of the time, every time that I used to be jobless, I used to think I really need to pursue this. Down to even writing down, you know, a few pointers here. And then now, of course, there's the fear of failure. Yeah. And, you know, you really don't have any confidence in yourself. I'm like, hey, boys, why am I? Who am I? Who am I lying to? I'm not an entrepreneur. I'd even sit down and say, you know what? I'm an implementer. Yeah. I don't, I don't come up with ideas. Give me your idea. I'm going to implement that. Yeah. And I didn't even know how limiting that was, even yeah. to my own psyche. Yeah. So here I am. I have a different space in my mind. And I'm like, you know, I'm ever, definitely not going to get employed right now. So what I'll do is I'm going to try. And I sat down in my mother's kitchen table. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to start a catering business. And it's going to be called a Shiko's Kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I keep telling everybody, I started with a negative 150 shillings. Wow. Negative. Wow. Negative 150, Bob. Uh, because I had to borrow, you know, I had to ask my brother to send me data. Mm-hmm. So I lo- wrote a long post and I on Facebook. And I said, you know what, guys? I've hung up my corporate heels. I'm going to try and pursue my passion because over time I came and discovered, you know, I'm a creative. Yeah. I really am a creative. Mm -hmm. If you don't engage my mind, if what I'm doing doesn't feel like it's a hug to my soul, Mm -hmm. then you're going to lose me very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. So I posted and unlike most people, and that's why I say it's very hard for me to talk about my journey without bringing a little bit of spirituality into Mm -hmm. it. Uh, God was very, very good to me. Right. Most businesses start and they take a few, you know, months to pick up. Mm-hmm. I started and my business picked up immediately. Wow. But wait, your, your negative 150, where did you get the money for the inputs? Because you need ingredients, No, right? my, my mom, you see, of course, now I'm starting. And then, you know, the best thing about it is sometimes it's getting in my wide circle. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say of friends. Mm-hmm. I want to say of acquaintances. Yeah. Because as you keep growing, you come and find out, hey, okay. Mm-hmm. Perhaps, mm-hmm. you know, so in my wide circle, there were people who saw me yeah, and people understood what I was trying to do, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, I, I can name them by names, but I do not want to molika them and then carry to be set that direction. <laughs> okay. So there were people who were very supportive and they yeah. asked me, so what do you need? I said, I'm going to start. And I think this is even lesson to anybody who wants to start uh, doing any businesses, start with what you got. Yeah. Yeah, I sit and I look at, I, I made a business plan and I sit and I look at my business plan right now and I laugh. <laughs> I have a good five laughs. And I was like, what was I thinking? Yeah. The, the, I had some grandiose plans. Mm-hmm. And then you know, think about ground, you know, and I, eh, 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 things are very, very different yeah. here. Yeah. And so I was lucky. I got two people who chimed in some money. Mm-hmm. My mother also played a very big role because we're talking about cooking. Yeah. So we have a kitchen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I started. And mm-hmm. when I started, it was a team of man solo. Okay. So when I started, I was a salesperson, I was a procurement person, I was a delivery person, I was logistics, I was everything. I was production. I was everything. Wow. I was myself. Yeah. And I had very many moments of doubting myself. Like, you know what? I'm the kind of person, you know, I'd gotten into zombie mode mm-hmm. for the past decade, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. And um there's uh, something that uh, Robert Koyasaki says, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, workers work hard enough, you know, so that they, they can get paid and employers, you know, pay mm-hmm. just enough so that the guys don't quit. Yes. And that's a mentality that we have here. Yeah. So we are all on zombie mode. Wake mm-hmm. up, go to work, do the bare minimum so that you're not fired. So now here I am. I don't have anybody who's paying me. I don't have anybody who's backing down my throat. I don't have anyone who's asking me why you're not at work. Mm-hmm. And I really had, you know, I, I, I got 
scared. I had a full-blown panic attack and I'm like, wow. what am I doing? And this is coming at a very crucial time because I've already gotten orders. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And I'm having complete panic mode and I'm like, this is my first order. I don't know what I'm going to do. Why? You know, growing up being told, you know, you're not going to amount to anything. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do this. You're just like, did I bite off more than I can chew? Why couldn't I just stay in my lane? Yeah. Which is a puppet. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I didn't have a choice. I had to overcome that bump. And I was able, and I remember the first time I made the food, I made the food and I was so nervous and I did not know where containers are gotten. Mm -hmm. I did not know. I don't have a car, so I don't know how I'm going to transport. Nilibebana na chakula za watu kwa matatu. Oh. And I... these are 15 meals. Wow. These are 15 meals because we're doing three meals a day uh -huh. for five days. Yeah. So these are 15 meals. So, so everything is individual because you have your starch, you've got your protein, and you've got your veggie. Uh -huh. And the containers are like this big. Mm -hmm. And so I put them in these bags for quick mat, uh, mm -hmm. for, for Carrefour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of the weight, the first time, some of them are just getting pressed under and ah, the yeah, soup yeah, yeah, is yeah, pouring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's someone in the bottle to say, making a mess on people's chairs. <laughs> you know, in that time, I'm going to leave the food. The food doesn't even pick it halfway. Oh I don't know the exact location. Yeah. I was a mess. Oh my goodness. Let's even backtrack a little bit. By the time I was getting the ingredients, the meat and all of that, mm -hmm. My mom and her, you know, you got to do this, you got to do this. I told me, you have to go to the market. Lazima uh wende soko ya kisirian. And to go and get your... To go and yeah. get meat, to go and get whatever, whatever. Yeah. I'm like... Mm. Yeah. I don't know if that's really my place. <laughs> <laughs> Zucchini? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> So that, there I am with mm -hmm. gum food, you yeah. know, in Kiserian. Yeah. And I'd walk in and they say, eh, on Emma Dogo, eh, on oh, I'm Hiya. like, oh God. And I'm smack in the middle of the slaughterhouse, you know? Yes. And I'm just thinking, these people are going to steal me. Yes. And, you know, those are one of the, the learning points and it's so difficult. But of course, you know, you have to fess up and say, you know what? I decided I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. So I'm there and I'm, you know, huggling with people. Ah, ni patia nyama yangu. Ah, you know. Yeah. Ah, you know ah. And then after that, I reached the corner. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I can't. I can't. This life is just not for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I continue uh -huh. and I continue and I've gone to deliver food to people's houses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're getting, of course, and I'm, I'm over there with my two bags, yeah. you know, yeah. get to a point and the gate and the watchman was like, when end up, when walking, when did I get here? Oh my God. I, I, was, I was taking trips. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've got expensive yeah. hair and expensive mm -hmm. nails and mm -hmm. a nice life. When did mm -hmm. I get here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How life can just do a complete 360 yeah. and find you on your bottom? Yeah. yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So there I was. But I'll have to tell you something where you are. The 10 years working uh -huh. um, compared to the one year mm -hmm. before things went topsy turvy again. Yeah. yeah. Um, the amount of knowledge and the amount of um, self-actualization and self-awareness that I got, mm -hmm. are, you cannot compare. Yeah. What I learned in that year mm -hmm. really goes down to how much passion is important. Yes. I, I, I would wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and I would not have the alarm set. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'd go to the markets. Mm -hmm. I don't have the luxuries, car, whatever. No, 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 matatu. Okay. Whether it's raining, whether it's shining, whichever. Mm -hmm. And I'd go and I'd have, and there were moments that I would physically, my brain was so happy. My spirit was so happy. My body was physically breaking down. Right. Because this kind of physical ascension, you know, I've never done that before. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's behind the desk kind of situation. If you need to go somewhere, you know, you're driven, Uber, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And so here I am, but there was a satisfaction. Oh, Lord. Yeah. There was a satisfaction that I had never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Because I've been living people's narrative, mm -hmm. what they say about me. Mm -hmm. But here I am, and I'm living my story. Yes. They said I could not be able to do it. And here I am, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And you have to sit back and say, wait a minute, what's, what's happening? What's happening? And I got my first payment. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I got my first payment, and I'll remember this is even before the food. And I, I had delivered some juice and some moses. 
and I was delivering to the hub. Wow. Yeah. No, 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 not the hub. Someone was meeting me at the oh, hub. Okay, okay. Hey, I was like, hey. Hey. <laughs> Zero to a hundred, <laughs> perhaps. Uh-huh. <laughs> So I was delivering to a lady who was meeting a good friend of mine, one of the people who really supported me. Uh, she said, oh, are you doing okay? I, I need some snacks for Christmas and stuff like that. And I said, okay, fine, then I'll do that for you. And I got for her, you know, made for her some fresh juice and some samosas, just something. Everything was coming to a total of about 1200 mm-hmm. And I went to make the delivery with my son. Mm-hmm. My first monies I made did not leave the hub. It was... We blew it there. <laughs> Everything we blew everything. Uh-huh. We was went to KFC. I told my son, "Have, have, 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 have. what do you want?" <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was the first money as I was holding, yeah. and it was money that was coming from my sweat. I was not accustomed to that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had the imposter syndrome when I was working through mm-hmm. it because I'm just like, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this money. Mm-hmm. So anyway, fast forward, I did that for about a year. And then, because life is just life, uh-huh. COVID happened. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. Uh-huh. So COVID happened, mm-hmm. and they start announcing the no social gatherings, yes. no this. I mean, heck, as much as we were all scared, you know, the eateries, the caterers, so all of us guys really, really, you know, and... I think that was, you know, with the way we play Onyiro 1, Onyiro 2, yeah. that was my Onyiro 2. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, where do I start? Mm-hmm. The thing about the businesses, when small and most small business owners and entrepreneurs will know, is uh, you get a lot of money, but you get small, 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 small amounts throughout. Yes. You don't get a lump sum. Mm-hmm. And whatever you're getting, you have to sort out your overheads. Mm-hmm. So when you're starting off, you know, the only thing that rewards you is the passion and you know how much I'm loving and you know self-growth. Yeah. So you give yourself, at least most people talk about, you give yourself at least six months de- depending mm-hmm. on the size mm-hmm. of, the, of, the, of the establishment you're building. Yeah. You know? And so here I am. I can survive. Yeah. But I'm not comfortable. Yeah. I'm not pandemic ready. I know yeah. very many people who are not pandemic ready, but True. me, I was definitely not pandemic ready completely, uh-huh. you know, because this is my lifeline. So you're getting little amounts of money. You're taking care of school fees. You're taking care of this. You're taking care of your child. You know, you're paying a few bills off here, you know, but you need it. You know, it's very sustainable and it was very engaging. And I was even surprised at myself uh-huh. because getting me to make those sales phone calls used to be such a headache, you know? Right. I mean, I have all the rebuttals, but... But this one I would call, and anybody who's most probably watching this has most probably gotten a message from me. You have gotten a message from me. Oh, Hello, yes. are we doing samosas this week? <laughs> I mean, there was no deterring my <laughs> determination. Yeah. I, there's nothing you're going to tell me that I've not had before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there I am, and COVID happens, and I'm just thinking, okay, what am I going to do? At this point, I've already been able to afford to even move out of my mother's house. Right. So my son and I have moved out. Off of we the have food on, business alone. Yes, from the wow. food business alone. Okay. Okay. So I've been able to move out and I'm just like, isn't this karma? Because I'm like, oh, I really enjoyed from the get-go, the business picked up. I would get orders every other week. I was even able to um, to morph uh-huh. from just doing weekly meal plans to catering events. Wow. So I would be called, I'd be told, come and do a baby shower, come and do this. I mean, I have to give such a huge appreciation to girls of my former high school, you mm-hmm. know, Limuru Girls High School. I mean, mm-hmm. these ladies came through for me like there's no other. Right. You know, so people would always call me, come for this catering gig, come and do this. Former colleagues would call me. And, you know, let me point out something <clears throat> that I really hate, the notion that people perpetuate about uh, women being our own worst enemies. Yes, indeed, yeah. I hate that. Yes. And this is not coming from the point that I host a female talk show. Mm -hmm. This is coming from the point that it is complete hogwash. Absolutely. We may differ in opinion. We may differ in lifestyle, in character, in fundamentals. If I dislike you, I don't dislike you because you're a woman. Mm -hmm. I dislike you because I don't like, you know, stuff about you. Yes. It does not have anything to do with you being female biologically. Yes. And I think the generation of women that we're bringing up need to know that. Yes. We need to grow up and know how to adjust each other's crowns mm-hmm. and not bring each other down. And if there's a moment that was ever evident for me was when I started my business. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the dudes. Yeah. But I'm saying all these dudes who wanted to buy me planes, uh-huh. all those dudes who wanted to take me to places. Uh-huh. They were, they were uh, gone. No, 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 no. They pulled a Houdini <laughs> completely. You know, now you see me, now you don't. <laughs> but the women, yeah. the women came through tenfold. You know, I mm-hmm. can name names. This is scary. I can mm-hmm. name names. 
you know and i'm like this chicks yani they would order you know even when i'm having my hiccups cuz as ingine ningeenda samosa ziaribike uh-huh. and i have to go back home with them yeah and you're having those ones saying and yeah you know something hey chime i know you've jaribu de eh? yeah this chicks had my back yeah from high school friends acquaintances you know someone who's just ordering because they know you're doing this job yeah Yeah. And I think that is where I mean so it you know I was just like you know what this is it this mm-hmm. is it and that's a notion that I really want to push you know leave that story about no mhm mhm let's not even bother with being envious of each other because yes. if you were to walk a mile in my shoes I'm sure people would watch this and be shocked They'd be like I thought her life was easy yo it's not it's not been it's yeah. been difficult yeah you mm-hmm. cannot walk a mile in somebody else's shoe my mother says something that I love she says Uh, utaenda kwa soko na shida zako ukitaka kuziuza utarudi nazo nyumbani kwa sababu kila mtu na shida zake by the way you know yeah <laughs> so over time women really really helped me i would have someone who used to order weekly mm-hmm. and she's ordering for five liters of juice and i know that it's not it's not ishad yeah yeah, yeah that's what i have to say mercy thank you so so much oh. and she would order every week five liters of juice and 20 samosas five liters of juice and 20 samosas it was like clockwork yeah Yeah. And sometimes she'd be like, "Can I just pay you for the whole month?" Oh. And she just, you know, and I know that five liters has not ended. But uh-huh. she just be like, "Let me support you. Let me support you." These are the people who I really 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 owe a, a huge debt of gratitude to. Uh-huh. Hmm? Yeah. Right. So, how did you get through the pandemic period then? Yeah. So now after on your one and I got into, you know, I got a little bit depressed again. Okay. People keep on thinking that it's something that you can snap out of. Yeah. is because depression takes you to the lowest low low you know once you've already hit a certain place it's very easy for you to go back there yeah because here i am the schools have been closed mm-hmm. i'm a single mom mm-hmm. schools have been closed my child is home mm-hmm. i have no money mm-hmm. we don't know what we're going to feed each other mm-hmm. electricity ndio ina kuangalia hivi gas is looking for you yeah you know i mean there was just it was difficult and so you I'm getting assistance from my mom mm-hmm. because people are not ordering for food. Yeah. You know there's for lack of a better word a gag order on any anything culinary based. Yes, yes. So there's really nothing for you to do. Yeah. You know? And you're also scared for your own safety. So True. it's not so much that if you get a gig you'll take it. There's so many precautions that have to be put in place. Yeah. And I had to turn inward, you know, you do a lot of journaling, you do a lot of introspection, you do you you I I I I did a lot of focusing on the year that has been. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? There's been so much growth. I've already done this, you know. Of course the naysayers, oh, those guys never grow anywhere. Uh-huh. They're like, mm, "Tuta ulikuwa unafikiri wewe ni mtu wa biashara? Wewe si mtu wa biashara?" And that's a thing. Those guys don't they don't care about yeah. the progress that you're making or how yeah. far you've come. Yeah. Even though you were a different person back then and yes. you're trying to turn over a new leaf. Yeah. There's always going to be individuals who will be so keen at reminding you and pulling you right and back and pulling you right place. back yeah. mm-hmm. and they were almost successful mm-hmm. but but we really do you know our maker never forgets us mm-hmm. and one day I get a message from uh from Mr. Nicholas Wangond okay. on Facebook mm-hmm. and he tells me have you he says hello we had been in communication uh, early but you know prior to that but it was mostly about cooking and he was asking if i can go and assist in a kitchen that he's setting up and stuff like that he said right now i cannot be able to do i want to focus i don't want to be employed mm-hmm. anymore i want to focus on this and says hello again he asked me have you ever thought of um of hosting of being on tv and i can see why because my goodness i've checked and fuck i've got tears in my eyes oh no 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 i'm hilarious <laughs> I'm hilarious. <laughs> Nobody can tell me that those are things I know. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> right. So so, mm-hmm. so Nick Wangondo gets in touch with me and tells me, you know, um we're coming up with a concept. It's going to be a show. It's going to be a travel show and, you know, I've been following you on Facebook. I see how you, you know, I see how you talk. I see how you articulate yourself. You know, talk for lack of a better yeah. word because I don't do the videos and stuff like that. And I think you'd be a good fit. And what is uh, Mr. Nicholas Wangondo? So Mr. Say? Nicholas Wangondo actually was a, was Kenyan's big brother uh big brother representative okay. let's start from there mm-hmm. he uh, was also he's a celebrity by the way my guy is a celebrity kabisa uh-huh. he was on mashariki mix right he was on travel diaries mm-hmm. and the interesting about it is i remember watching him mm-hmm. with Eve D'Souza doing travel diaries and i remember getting green with envy like who 
gets paid yeah to travel, travel. <laughs> it's not even a job yeah you know and i just and you know and i think sometimes it's important to put your wishes and you just send them to the universe or to your maker and somehow they will actually happen mm-hmm. and so this is the same guy who's sending me a message and i'm just like mm. and we did an interview where he said i know she thought i was hitting on her <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of did. Yeah. So uh, I took a while before, but I responded eventually and said, oh, by the way, we need to schedule a sit down between myself and the producer of the show and we see if you're going to be a good fit uh-huh. and say, fantastic. That is good. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this gig has landed just because like you've been being that. yourself. Because For you've been being, being myself. You know, yes. the same self that is always being bashed and yeah. said, oh my God, you're too much. You're dramatic. You're yeah. this. You know, tone it down. Yeah. You know, I was like, where? It's mm-hmm. about time. Yes. It's about time. Uh-huh. Because the thing about it, all along my career, you know, in 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 uh, selling media, I had gotten so many times where people would be like, you know what, you need to be on radio. Mm-hmm. You need to be on radio. You need to be on radio. I never tried that. Mm-hmm. I never did. I never felt like I was good enough. Mm-hmm. I used to say, me, my stories are good. Me, my stories are for the bar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To make it chini, we're having one, two, three. Those ones are, those are my stories. I'm not yeah. going to be able to find something to talk about for an hour. Mm-hmm. And it was so much so that even the late Bruce Othiambu kept on pushing me and he pushed me and he tell me, you know what? You really have something here, by the way. You need to pursue that. When I was in Royal Media Services, you know, when I started yeah. off in 2009, which is where I started off, mm-hmm. um, the late Catherine Casavuli called myself and Bernard Dom mm-hmm. for a screen test. Okay. And Bernard got it. And that's why he's the amazing person. I mean, yeah. sometimes I know he won't give me, you know, he won't say anything, but you know me, I have to pokes on mm-hmm. that. And I'm just like, I was there when the legend <laughs> was being made. Yay. <laughs> I was there, you know. Uh-huh. So I was there. So he was picked. I wasn't. Uh-huh. And of course, the fear of failure plays back again. And I was not about to go and try that again mm. because it was a gut feeling. You feel like a gut, someone has punched you in there, yeah. in the gut, yeah. you know, because it's something that I always wanted to do. Right. I always wanted to, to I mean, I can run my mouth. I always wanted to do something on mm-hmm. media, TV, radio, whatever. So, you know, we had, you know, and by virtue, and may her soul rest in eternal peace, by virtue of the fact that she, she, had seen something. Yeah. That thing still chokes me up. Mm-hmm. I didn't follow through, but I wish we would have had a moment where I, where I am right now at KBC to interact. Mm-hmm. And I'd have told her, you set this spark. Mm-hmm. You got this going mm-hmm. over 10 years ago. Wow. So thank you for that. Mm-hmm. You know, and the thing about it is, so there was there was Catherine who called me for the for the for for the screen test. I didn't get in, but I gave up on that. Then there was late, you know, the late Bruce Othiambo who would constantly keep on telling me, "Yeah, where were you? You know, you need to be doing these things. You need to be doing these things." And I just didn't feel like I was good enough because I was like the kind of level of the people you people deal with, mm-hmm. and little old me. Mm-hmm. And that's where self worth always plays. Yes. Uh, so little old me, I don't, I can't equate to all of that. Mm-hmm. And then there was also now the likes of Jimmy Gathu, mm-hmm. who is a very, very good, very personal, you know, personal friend of mine, who's mm-hmm. always been edging me forward. Mm-hmm. Just like you need to do this, you can be able to do this. You've gone through so much, you can be able to last. Those are some of the people that I'm very proud to say that these are these are some of the individuals who molded me to where I am. Right. And there's no stopping this train. Mm-hmm. You know. Amen. So here I am and Nick has, has, has called me and he's told me and we go and we meet and we sit down and we had a meeting at Art Cafe in, uh, in Lovington and we sit down and uh, remember this is coffee time. I've been broke. My friend, I even had to borrow fare to uh, get there. Ah, wow. friend. Uh-huh. And I kept on hoping that these are not those people who ask me to order for so, food and then they say and that. Then it, it, yes. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. you see the way my... My money is wired. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, my bank account is set up. <laughs> These are not my name. You know. Uh-huh. So we sit down and they introduce this concept of a show called Zurura. Mm-hmm. And I say, first of all, stop right there. That's me. Yeah. That's, that's just me. Yeah. Even you guys know that's just me. Because yeah. me, I'm the person for laps. You know me, I'm everywhere, everywhere, yeah. everywhere. So, of course, they do what you're doing right now. They crack up during the day. And they think, I think you're perfect for it. <laughs> oh, my God, Ashika. Ooh. That's now Rosemary Bell, who is the producer. She's like, oh, my God. It's going to be so much fun. I think you're perfect for it. We just uh-huh. need to pitch you to our sponsors to see if they're good. You need to go and get headshots. Do I know what headshots mm. are? No. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know what headshots are, but it was a fantastic medicine. Just organize yourself, go to a studio, 
get the headshots done. And I go to the studio and, you know, still the same thing. People who pushed me, pushed me. So someone tells me, you know what, I'm going to sponsor this one. You go to this particular headshot, mm -hmm. uh, this particular studio. Mm -hmm. Because if you want the best, Helen, you got to do the best. Yes. Go to that studio. I go to the studio and it's a very expensive studio and he covers those charges. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God sends angels in dressed in very many different ways. Yes. And I remember being told to pause with lights like this one. And you see, and I'm just like, all the th everything I'm most interested in is I need to suck in my gut. <laughs> like I need to, I need to find an angle. And I'm thinking of Akina Kate Moss and how they kunja their bodies. And, uh, and the cameraman was like, are you okay? Like, are you in pain? I'm like, what? I'm doing couture. Isn't this like couture? <laughs> it's just like, what is wrong with you guys? You know, I'm trying to be a model here. They're like, just relax. Do you? <laughs> so I was folding myself in bodies, trying to contort myself to look like Kit Moss and suck in my gut yeah. while I'm at it. Yeah. And so that was it. So I do the Nini, the pictures came out amazing. I was happy with them. Mm -hmm. I send them to, of course, now the director of the show. Mm -hmm. Says, we'll get back to you. Uh, eventually, you know, when the when the guys of uh, the show do, uh, you know, I mean, the sponsors of the show, you know, if they like it. Yeah. And of course, there's the whole thing. So the fear creeps back in. Mm -hmm. It's like, I knew it. I'm not mm -hmm. going to get it. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. Yeah. Who's going to want me? I don't want me. You know, self-worth is something that is yeah. a demon, to yeah. be honest, for lack of a better word. Yeah. If you don't understand and appreciate your worth and that you're a piece to a puzzle without which the whole puzzle is incomplete, mm -hmm. then you will constantly be circling the drain, True. trying to figure out what your purpose is, what you are. You know, first of all, to know who am I? What do I stand for? Forget about what you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. So thank God we got the job. Started traveling the country. Uh -huh. <laughs> we started traveling the country and it was amazing. It was, you know, I keep on saying life is so unpredictable. We don't know where, you know, how long we'll be there. But if my day is to come, that experience, shooting Zurura, you know, gave me the whole Venevi de Vici experience. Wow. I came, I saw, I conquered. Right. I did things that I would never in a million years yeah. have done mm -hmm. or afforded. Mm -hmm. You know, and these are things that nobody can take away from me. True. And when I got on air and people would start saying, my God, you're a natural, you're a natural. This is something I didn't even go to school for. Mm -hmm. You're a natural, you're really good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. So the conversation that started happening in my head started changing from you're worthless, you'll never amount to anything, you'll never do anything, you know. Yeah. You know, And there's always the, something is about to happen, something bad is going to happen, you're setting yourself up. You're, so all the self-doubt started washing away. Right. And then when we got nominated for the Kalasha Award, then that too. I mean, I was like, wait, me? Yes. Me? Hello? Helen Ashikombo? Me? Uh -huh. Me? Are you sure? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You? Wow. And even though we didn't win. Still being nominated is It big. was huge for me. Yes. It was so huge. And we finished shooting 13 wonderful episodes. Traveled Excellent. across the country in such adverse uh, situations. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we were in the heart of COVID. Mm. So travel restrictions had been put in place. Mm -hmm. As in so many things, this one we need like three hours. Yeah. You know, Nick and I need to sit down and we just tell them, oh my God, all the things that we had to go through. Yeah. But... The work ethic jumped in and I knew this is, you know, that's when I knew this is what I want to do. Right. This is my purpose. Yeah. Because all along, you'd always keep on feeling like, okay, I would like to, but am I really cut out for this? We're talking about getting into a cave that is full of bats. You know, talking about bungee jumping and skydiving and swimming in the ocean and doing things that Helen wow. behind the desk. Would have never done. And hanging then, around with snakes. Mm, wow. <laughs> So, but the, the thing is, this then led to your dad's yes, show gig, yes. right? Yeah. And now you're permanently transitioned into being in front of a camera. I, I don't know how I'm doing now. You tell me how I'm doing I so far, doing you know? Excellent. <laughs> I think you're absolutely doing You excellent. tell me how I'm doing so far yeah. because that's, that, that's it. That's why, I, but every single thing that mm -hmm. I experienced, both good and bad, mm -hmm. but especially bad, mm -hmm led me closer to where I am right now. Yes. 
Yeah. Every single, and I saw something that said, uh, my failure led to my success. Yeah. And that thing resonated with me so hard. Mm. Because if it was not the constant leaving the job, the vicious cycle, I would have never, the nervous breakdown. Yeah. I would have never gotten to a point of realizing that perhaps this is not for me. Yes. Perhaps this is not my calling. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there's an issue. Perhaps there's an emotionally an emotional issue that I need to delve into. Right. That I need to figure. I would have never gotten there. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the fact that COVID came around, mm -hmm. you know, I would have never given the day or time, you know, to my wonderful, you know, former director. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have gotten there. Yeah. If it wasn't the Kalasha, you know, nominations and stuff like that, and the confidence that I got for people watching me on TV and telling me, you know what, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're born to do. You're doing something. I would have never been confident enough to actually apply. Yes. You know, because mm. Zerura sort of phoned me. Yeah. The that show, I had to apply. Right. You know? And there were, and I got there feeling cocky because it was, I had the, you know, post- Mm -hmm. Kalasha Award Glow, mm -hmm. and I found women there. Yeah. And we were supposed to mimic an interview, uh -huh. and we sat down, and uh, I thought I'm doing great because I, you know, I interviewed so many people on Zerura, and I finished, and I, you know, sort of one of those ones that she's going to, yeah, that's how it's done, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the girl who sat right after me, <sighs> she, oh she, she aced it. Oh, Lord, she was good. She wow. was really good. And I remember feeling the sinking, feeling like, oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? And that goes to tell people about preparedness. Yeah. I hadn't really sat down and prepared for that interview. I was just like, you know what? I'm me. They can do. Yeah. 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 So when they called for the second one, oh, I was ready. Yeah. I had been staying up all night. I had read ahead. And now, now I felt like, okay, yeah. You out of the park. And here you are. And here I am. So I have one final question. Yes. Would you finally say that you are happy, you know, you're in a good space? In a good space, yes. Excellent. Happy, happy is a continuous, it's not linear. Yeah. It's a continuous mm -hmm. process for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I cannot ever say, but yes, actually, mm -hmm. yes, I am happy. Sometimes it's very dangerous to say, oh my God, I'm ecstatic. See, a journey to recovery, mm -hmm. a journey to, uh, a journey on uh, self-awareness and healing from traumas that you've experienced has its ups and downs. But True. keyword is the journey. It's never the destination. It's the steps by steps you take. Yes. So what I do is I do the alcoholic serenity prayer. Okay. And I, and I pray for every single day. Mm -hmm. And I say today, as I'm walking out today, mm -hmm. you know, I hope that this is going to be a good day. But there are definitely days that are bad. Yeah. There are days that you sit and you reflect on your past and mm -hmm. you're not too happy mm -hmm. about some of the choices that you made, you know, and you know that it is something that is going to follow you and haunt you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But then again, with the kind of help that you get from therapy, which I always advocate for anybody, it doesn't yes. mean that you're cuckoo. Mm -hmm. Just means that the same way you'd go to a doctor because you have a toothache is the same way, you know, just to. Indeed. So help of therapy, help of friends, reading a lot, mm -hmm. you know, focusing on the positive, surrounding yourself with positive people, yes. positive energy. Guys, I cannot insist that more. Positive energy. Mm -hmm. And I don't like throwing terms narcissistic and toxic yeah, yeah. around because I feel like Nairobians are sort of sometimes yeah. misusing them. Yeah. But there are certain people who are like that. Yeah. So be very careful and boundaries. Yes. So for me to be able to maintain the kind of happiness and the space I'm in right now, I have been very, very jealous mm -hmm. about who I let into my space. Yes. And of course, that day I get very good responses. Yeah. Oh, she's on TV right now, so she feels like she's on top of the world. I'm yeah. not there. Woy guy. Still have the same set of still hustling, still doing this. Yeah. But I've just very intentionally said that I'm only going to let people into my space who are who are going to build me up. Amen. Yeah. And see, I can equally be toxic. Yeah. I could be with someone and we become toxic together. Mm -hmm. So self-awareness teaches you to be very cognizant about what you're doing, how it has an effect on you and others and the environment around you. Mm -hmm. And just constantly having your eye, very intentionally, very purposely, having your eye on what your goal is. You yes, know, my yes. goal is not my failures. My failures do not define me, but yes. my failures got me to where I am right now. Which is an excellent, excellent 
excellent way to put it. So finally, where can we catch your show, KBC, what time, what day? Oh, okay, fantastic. So my show is called The Dada's Show. Mm -hmm. Uh, it airs every single Sunday at 4 p.m. on KBC Channel One. We also have all the previous uh, episodes uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, we always encourage it's an interactive show. So mm -hmm. if there's any woman who feels like mm -hmm. she needs, you know, she needs to share a story, something that is going to be very, very, um, is going to be purposeful, is going to help women and mm -hmm. young girls around mm -hmm. the country and around the world, you know then they can definitely reach us at uh, KBC Channel One. Uh, then you can tell them I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> On that yeah. note, what, let me tell you, this has been the most fun interview I have ever done. Thank Yay! you so much. Thank Yay! you so much for your time and Thank your you. wisdom. Thank you right? so much for having me. Um, please make sure you catch up with her Sunday, 4 p.m. And in the meantime, we will see you next week for another one just like this one. Yay.